What's up, y'all? Today is a very special day. It is December 30th, 2022, and I am attempting for the first time in three whole years to leave China. You've reached the destination. I haven't been to this part of the airport in so long. I'm so excited. I know you guys want to know where I'm going. Uh, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> You'll find out when I get there. I'm getting ready to go through customs. Oh my God. Everything is digitized now. I had to fill this out and then I just scanned it when I got to this desk and I was all good to go. That's it. I'm having major 2020 vibes right now. The only difference is there's far less people in the airport, but I haven't been here since 2020. It's so empty, look. It almost feels like I'm doing something wrong. Customs really didn't ask me much. She just asked where I was going. I said, and she asked if I was going back to the US and I said, and she said, okay, have a good trip. Can you imagine how bored these people must be, must have been for the past three years? Look at that. George on the map with Dr. King and everything. What a sight to see in Chongqing International Airport. Non-stop flights from Chongqing to New York, LA, and other destinations. Not right now, not right now, but look what we have to look forward to. Oh, this is so exciting. My anxiety has disappeared as I am approaching my gate. I notoriously get to the airport with exactly enough time to go to the bathroom, get some water, and then arrive at my gate exactly when it's boarding. Like it's, it works every time. I've never missed a flight in China. Once I cross this threshold, I won't be in China anymore. Okay, not exactly, but you know what? Air China makes its flight attendants put on PPE mid-flight before we land in a foreign country. Why? All the problems are in... Never mind. So I had to recheck my bags. I had to get my bag from Chongqing here in Hong Kong. Just go out of the airport. Not out, but out. Come back in, recheck my bag, and get a new boarding pass. Which is very easy. It seemed difficult. There was an easier way to do it if I would not have brought a checked bag, but I had to, I had to. So now I'm about to go back in and hopefully find something better to eat and chill. My gate hasn't even been assigned yet, so I still have plenty of time. The beginnings of reverse culture shock have already began. I'm already super glad that I went on this trip to prepare me for the future. I mean, only people who have been trapped in mainland China for the past three years can fully understand this, but like, this is a very good way to like, ease myself back into like the real world. Sitting in an airport, with multicultural people who are speaking multiple languages. Nobody's tripping over me. No one's staring at me. No one's even tripping off the fact that I'm, I've been recording in here and like, I'm sitting here having this conversation with the camera. That's the first thing, like, that's nice. Thailand. 
why did I choose to come to Thailand? Well, Thailand is to China what Mexico is to the USA. It's my happy place. All right, I'm gonna try to do this real life vlogging thing. All right, I'm gonna try. All right, so look, first, let me explain why I came here to Thailand when I came, okay. For those of you who are unaware, China has ended all restrictions. Hooray! It's very tumultuous, abrupt, emotional into all of the COVID restrictions. And I was feeling very emotional about that and some other things going on in my life. That combined with the fact that it was cold. I don't like being cold. I went to Shanghai for Christmas. Shout out to James and Kelly, John Thomas Abroad, and Elise Lightyear. I had an amazing time with them in Shanghai on Christmas Day. But when I returned to Chongqing, I was in my feelings again, and I knew I did not want to ring in 2023 feeling like that in that place. So on the 29th, I booked a trip to Thailand. I've been here before. I've always felt comfortable here. I was really cold in Chongqing and it's always warm here. So that was basically it. Like I just needed something that was somewhat familiar, good weather and not too far away. I'm only one hour time difference. Should have been a two hour flight, but it was a eight hour journey. <laughs> Thanks to the layover in Hong Kong. Let's get into, ooh, let's get into the sweat. Let's get into life outside of the Chinese bubble. The first reverse culture shock that I experienced was having to use an ATM. In China, we don't use cash. We don't need to go to an ATM. We don't need to pull out a debit card. We don't need to tap or swipe. All of that is very confusing for me. Like in China, we pay for everything with our phones. Everybody has Alipay or WeChat and you just scan, scan, scan everything. First of all, I had to remember how to use an ATM. Like, okay, I mean, I've used ATMs in China from time to time, but just like, it's not a regular thing. So I'm a little bit slow. What's my PIN number? Like, and then I have to do conversions because I'm no, I'm so used to only spending you on like, all right. I don't, I don't, I hardly even like convert back to US dollars because I'm just only spending you on like, didn't know how much to take out of the ATM. If you're new to traveling or if you don't have XE app already, get it. It's a lifesaver to help you quickly do conversions when you're standing at the ATM and a bunch of people who are on your flight are behind you. Like what's wrong with this girl? Hurry up and get your money. Cash comes out and next the card comes out and you know what? It's really difficult to remove a thin plastic card with nails like this. Extremely difficult. In fact, today I had to ask the person standing in line behind me to take my card out of the machine. I couldn't get it out. I went up scared, I was gonna push it back in, and then the card was gonna get stuck and eaten up, and then my whole entire trip was over. Because that is the only card I have access to with money on it. Which brings me to the next thing. Money. In my apartment in Chongqing. I have a huge wad of foreign currency. Some of it is from Thailand. Not only that, there are currency exchange places everywhere in Bangkok, everywhere. And I didn't bring any of that in a really excited. The second thing is receipts, paper receipts. You pay for something, you get a piece of paper. You pay for something, you get a piece of paper. What is all this paper? Why are we using paper still? What's wrong with you guys? Get with the times. Related to money. In China, the price is the price. There's no tax added when you get to the register. Every now and then at certain markets, like the silk market, if you're bargaining in like a farmer's market, you can haggle a bit for, you know, a, dip, a, a discounted price. but. In general, the price is the price. You pay the price and you go on about your day. Everything in Thailand is a negotiation. The taxis, the tuk-tuks, the tours, everything is like, oh, by the way, I'm gonna need an extra 50. Oh, I'm gonna need an extra 100. Like, I'm tired of haggling. I hate it, I hate it. I hate negotiating when I'm just trying to travel. Also, outside of the bubble, Things move slowly. Everything moves pretty quickly in China. Like as much as I 
like to say people are only good at one thing they're very good at that one thing and everything is so efficient but here outside of the bubble things move slowly like the world doesn't revolve around me as a foreigner <laughs> i have to wait for things like right now i want to go i want to go to my next hotel but i have to wait <laughs> i have to wait for the driver that's just what never happened in china there's just always cars available unless you're in some like small remote town or something i had to wait for food for hours and hours and hours that would never happen in china either like this is a lot of waiting and i've realized my patience doesn't exist anymore due to the convenience of living in china for the past five years now for the good things the positive side about being outside of the bubble english is a universal language i totally forgot that like everyone defaults to english it's amazing to be able to just turn to the person next to me and speak and they know what i said no matter where they came from like everyone is a polyglot everyone is speaking multiple languages it's just been so long since i've heard spanish french german hindi like it's amazing in addition to that i totally forgot how many different styles of people there are so many flavors we come in i forgot it's been three years since i've seen anyone who isn't african black white or chinese that's it that's all i've seen for three years i met this guy in bangkok uh walking down the street trying to find a taxi to get back home on new year's eve and he was like guess where i'm from and i said bruh i have no reference i've been living in a homogenous world for three years i have no idea i'm not about to play myself by guessing your ethnicity <laughs> if you're not chinese black or white i have no idea he was from pakistan shout out to him another really awesome thing about this country is that cannabis is illegal uh i didn't think i was going to partake as much as i have if you guys want to see a whole dedicated video about that, let me know because I just went on my own tour of <laughs> dispensaries and I don't know, I got a bunch of little clips about things here that I could put together real quick. So let me know in the comments if you want to see this product. Being able to converse with different people, just like small talk. I've never seen a stick and poke before either. Uh, it's it's like, a right? Very tight with bamboo silk tethering. It's very yeah. tight with cotton. Uh, it looks like it's a piece. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'd rather be that way too. Absolutely. That looks so. So cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's so new for me right now. Like, <laughs> words are coming out, but they're not what I want to say sometimes. It's been a big transition, like just talking to people. I just came back from a little island hopping and you know, I got all the devices with me. So people were asking about the drone, about the little DJI pocket I normally film with. And you know, like what kind of camera is that? How does it work? What does it do? How far can your drone go? Just like things like that. And that's like so new for me being able to like completely have those conversations in English. It's also very nice and I'm not overwhelmed anymore. I was feeling a bit overwhelmed at first, but slowly easing my way back into like normalcy has been awesome, has been amazing, truly. We really were living in a bubble for three hard years. <coughs> Initially, this video was going to come out after I returned to China. I did not plan a return flight at all. I just know that I'm not going back until after the 8th. That's it. On January 8th, allegedly. Allegedly, allegedly. I can go back to China without a quarantine. I just need to have a 48 hour negative COVID test. No quarantine, no restrictions, no nothing. After January 8th. Today is January 6th. But I wanted to go ahead and make this because I have just been going through so much. Like so much has happened over the past seven days. I've been gone for a week. And if I don't get this down, it's, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna forget it. I wanted to go ahead and let you guys know how the process was getting out of China. 
I know that things have changed. One of the biggest things that we've dealt with is that the rules change every day. And as of today, I saw an article that said, if you're coming to Thailand from China, you need to have two vaccinations and maybe a negative test. I'm not exactly sure, but I did see the thing about two vaccinations. That stuck out to me because baby, your girl has no vaccinations. I did not get vaccinated in China. I didn't see the purpose uh, and I didn't want to. So I didn't, I'm not an anti-vaxxer or anything like that. I just, in the, in the space and time we were in, it did not make sense for me to get vaccinated. Once they ended the restrictions in China, da, 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 I got my vaccination in the form of my first time getting COVID. As soon as the, as soon as the restrictions ended, like everybody got it. And that is why all of these countries are starting to impose restrictions. The word is out, everybody in China has COVID or has had it recently or will get it very soon. And with Chinese New Year in two weeks, I'm sure people are trying to get up out of there. So I'm really, really thankful, grateful that I made that snap decision to just get out when I could. Now getting back is the task. But not yet, like I'm staying here until I feel better and I don't yet. So I don't know when I'm coming back. I don't know who's paying for this either. So like tell your friends to subscribe to this channel it's holding on by a string. I have a lot of content recorded, but I mean, if this thing don't monetize, I'm gonna be honest, y'all. I'm gonna let this go because I would rather just sit here and stare at the ocean and not record things all the time. If ain't nobody watching, if I ain't making no points, you feel me? <laughs> All right, so I hope this video was informative. I know it's probably chopped and screwed and all over the place, but baby, I'm on vacation. I'm trying to enjoy it. See you at the next destination. Don't forget to subscribe or I'm gonna turn this channel into nature videos only where we see shots like this all day, every day. I mean, if that's what you want, that's fine. Just let me know. Bye.